Hello there geographers and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Now so far throughout our topic review videos for unit 5 we've been looking at a bunch of different types of agriculture, we've been talking about how it's been changing, and we've also looked at different regions. Today though we're going to be going into one of the most important models of this entire unit. Today we're going to be covering unit 5, topic 8, Von Tunen's model. Now before we get started I want you to take a second and see if you're subscribed. By subscribing you help support the channel, allow me to make more videos, and it also make sure you don't miss any of my topic review videos. It's free and you can always change your mind later. Von Tunen's model of land use looks at how society utilizes land. This model was first proposed in a book, The Isolated State, in 1826. Von Tunen based his model off a couple different assumptions. The model assumes that all land is flat. It also assumes that there's one single market and that all land has equal access to the market. The model also assumes that farmers want to maximize their profits and that all land has similar site characteristics. Now I can already hear some of you in the comment section saying, Mr. Sin, this doesn't make sense. The physical geography is not all the same. We have different climates, different amounts of arable land. We trade in a global community. We don't stay in an isolated area. We have new technology that changes how we produce food. And we'll get to all of these concerns, I assure you, later in this video. However, remember, models are simplified versions of reality. They're not a perfect match. Von Tunen used these assumptions so this model could be applied to different geographic areas. Now it's almost time for us to go over his model, but before we get into that, I need to make sure you remember the bid rent theory. We talked about this in the Unit 5 Topic 6 video. Remember, the bid rent theory looks at the value of land. As we move farther away from an urban area, the price of land goes down. As we move closer to an urban area, the price of land goes up. Remember, we're more likely to see extensive agriculture be practiced further away from a market area or an urban area, and we're more likely to see intensive agriculture be practiced near an urban area. And all of that has to do with the price of land. That's going to be important to understand when trying to understand Von Tunen's model. And if you don't remember extensive agriculture, intensive agriculture, or that bid rent theory, go check out my 5.6 video and then come back and finish this one. That way the Von Tunen model will make sense to you. At the center of Von Tunen's model was the market. Here was where the agricultural crops and products would be sold to consumers. Now as we move outward from the market and into the first ring outside the market, we would find dairy farming and horticulture, which is located next to the market because the goods are perishable. Remember, Von Tunen created this model before the Industrial Revolution, which means we didn't have refrigeration. These products have a higher transportation cost, partially because of the speed needed to get them to the market. If they don't reach the market fast enough, they'll spoil and go bad. At the same time, these products require less land to produce. So by having dairy and horticulture next to the city or the market, we can maximize our profits and minimize our costs. The next ring is the forest, which today doesn't make as much sense, but at the time, lumber was used to build homes, heat homes, cook food. It was essential for people. And lumber is very difficult to transport. It's bulky, it's heavy, and so transportation costs, if located too far away, would be too high. So the forest was located in that next ring to allow for it to be able to get quickly to the city and reduce those costs. Again, remember, this model is all about maximizing our profit. Going into the third ring, we can see grains and field crops. These crops are lightweight. They don't perish and are easy to transport. This makes them cheaper to transport, so they don't need to be close to the market. These crops also require more land, so by locating them further from the market, we can reduce our costs since land is cheaper. You can see the bid rent theories at play here. The last ring is livestock or ranching and livestock. It's located here because of the amount of land needed in order for the livestock to graze. It would be difficult to acquire so much land near the market due to the cost of the land. Now the one issue that some of you may have noticed is that meat is perishable. It's also not the lightest thing to transport. So the further away it is from that market, the more expensive it is to transport. And so some of you might be asking, well, why isn't this within the dairy production? And honestly, it's a great question. The reason why livestock is so far out from the market is because the animals can walk themselves to the slaughterhouses that can be closer to the market. This allows farmers to get the cheaper land rates and also reduces their transportation costs. And if we move past the last ring, we'll find ourselves in the wilderness. And that's because we're too far away from the market for any commercial agriculture to be profitable. So we wouldn't see any located this far away from that urban center. Today, we can see that many parts of Von Tunen's model still apply to society today. However, some parts have started to change due to advancements in technology and shifts in 
society. For many societies, the forest is no longer located in the second ring of the model. Due to advancements in technology and transportation, which make it easier to transport lumber. Also, due to international trade, we've seen shifts in production. We also no longer have that daily need for lumber. We've also seen a shift in the production of livestock. Due to the rise of CAFOs, industrial farms, and agribusinesses, which pack animals into feedlots and feed them corn instead of letting them graze. This reduces the amount of land needed to raise livestock and allows farmers to become more profitable. We can also see changes to the model due to globalization. Advancements in technology, communication, and transportation allow cities and states to trade with countries around the world. Today, grocery stores no longer have seasons. Thanks to advancements in preservations, refrigeration, and GMOs, we can buy goods from all over the world in our local grocery stores. But despite all these changes, we still give Von Tunen credit for being one of the first people to study the spatial layout of society. All right, geographers, the time now has come to practice what we've learned. Answer the questions on the screen right now and check your answers in the comments below. Also, if you found value in this topic review video, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Not only does it support the channel and it's free, it also makes sure you don't miss any of the future videos that I post. Also, if you need a little bit more help in your AP Human Geography class, consider checking out my ultimate review packet. The packet covers all seven units of AP Human Geography. It has review videos, practice quizzes, study guides, answer keys, and two full practice AP tests. It is a great resource and it'll help you get an A in your class and a five on that national exam. All right, geographers, that's all the time we have for today. I'm Mr. Sid, and until next time, I'll see you guys online.